right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Tuesday, September 14th, and we've got another marathon week here for you this week at the Wine Watch. Last week, whew, really busy week, hard to keep up with everything last week, but uh, we did a lot of drinking over the weekends, you can see here. And uh, let's start with Brown Bag on Saturday afternoon. Well, the perfect size crowd at Brown Bag seems that uh, the reservation system is working. Thank you very much, those of you that were in attendance and uh, those of you that are making reservations. We appreciate it. It'll help us gauge the size of the crowd and uh, what kind of wines to bring. And we had some stunners this Saturday, the 1998 Corton Charlemagne from Talat Beau. Uh, this is the second time we've had this wine brown at Brown Bag over the last month or so. And thanks, Ray, for not upstaging me this time with a better bottle of Burgundy. Uh, but drinking very nice, showing some nice caramel tones to it, but still quite fresh and uh, definitely a vintage wine, but still hanging in there. Still, if you like vintage Burgundy, this wine is a steal at 67 bucks. I think we got a few bottles left in the store here. And then the 1988 Lynch Bash. Wow, Simone. Excellent stuff, man. This wine has some lovely coffee, fresh earth, typical Poyac, a little bit of that pencil lead still left in there. Uh, drinking beautiful, still has some years of life ahead of it, though. And some other great stuff, the 1998 Etude Cab. Thank you, David. This is the second or third time I think you brought that wine. Just goes to show you, you can't look at vintage all the time. You've got to look at producer Etude a great producer from Napa on this 98. I thought was showing better than the 97 Spotswood. Sorry, Ray. Don't shoot the messenger, but, uh, you know, I like the 98 Etude better than your 97 Spotswood. But some great stuff. Thanks once again, everybody. An outstanding brown bag. All right, well, Sunday was where most of this stuff came from. It was Isabella's seventh birthday party. And even though she's not old enough to drink yet, uh, you know, we're going to have some adults drinking some nice stuff if I got a party going on over at my house. And a few big bottles from 03. That was the year Isabella was born. The Orme de Pez, St. Estefe, really nice. And the Maryvale Reserve. Uh, these were both the last bottles I had of these guys. Thanks very much to the Consigliere. We had the 1996 Lewis Reserve. The big bottles for the kids aren't ready to drink yet, so uh, we're holding those back. I like to drink wine from my friends on an occasion like this. And uh, had some great stuff from La Spinetta two of the 06 single vineyard barbarescos my first chance to taste these wines uh maybe a little bit closed up 06 a great vintage but the star dairy wow definitely my favorite of the two i mean i like the galena a lot it tends to be a little more understated when it's young the star dairy just a load of exotic spice in the nose there some dried potpourri of flowers and uh, some lovely red cherry liqueur really nice both of those wines i just had them in the glass opening up all day so they had several hours to open up and uh the maryville pinot 08 really nice that was uh one i hadn't had before i didn't know maryville made pinot but this 08 vintage really nice we showed it at that boys of summer event and sold some so i figured we should try that but as you can see a lot of great stuff and ollie polished off i think most of the case of Heineken that we got there. So a good time was had by all. And we had a bunch of those Domain Ostertag wines that we sent out on the email yesterday. Some really nice stuff. The 07 Riesling Fraunholds. I sucked down uh, several glasses of that and a little bit of the Sylvan Air. Very nice stuff. All right. Well, yesterday in the store, Monday, we had a light day. We only had one supplier in the store, Jay Wolmer from Selected Brands, with one of the best wineries from Alto Adige. Uh, Elena Walk, and although Elena wasn't here herself, one of her guys was in town, and uh, some great stuff. He brought a bunch of really nice wines. The first wine from them I never had, the Wilhel Walk. I uh, love it how her husband's got the cheaper wine. She makes all the she makes the good stuff under her name. But uh, this is vineyards that uh, they've also purchased some fruit in addition to their estate fruit. But very clean style, all stainless steel, no oak with this wine. Really refreshing and light. But light on the palate, too, man. $12.75. Uh, nice little mineral note on the finish. Some zesty lemon citrus. Uh, really nice uh, little wine. We will have this in the store next week. Not picking up a lot of stuff this week. Words on vacation. we got five events. So um, a lot of the stuff that we like this week will be coming in next week for you guys. All right, the Elena Walk Pinot Grigio. Uh, this is 100% estate fruit, stainless steel, lovely stony and steely kind of mineral notes to the nose on this, lemon blossom, a little hint of kind of an almond nuttiness to this, and then uh, lovely concentration on the palate with the texture of whole milk or skim milk, lots of uh, tangy lemon citrus fruit, 
and uh, distinct minerality to all of these wines, and that's what you get when you're using lower yields and get concentrated fruit, uh, as you really notice the terroir in the wines as it showed through in all these wines. The Castle Ringberg Pinot Grigio, one of the greatest Pinot Grigios I've ever had. And it's $23.75. I mean, it's not even, like, incredibly expensive. This is their prize vineyard. They have a little castle in the middle, and the vineyard surrounding it is known as Castle Ringberg. And uh, just phenomenal concentration here. 15% uh, of this wine does see some barrique, a light flinty mineral note to this, and then some lovely lemon and melon citrus fruit, a little quince, and lovely concentration on the palate with this wine. You really notice it on the finish. Almost gives you this sensation of effervescence, the minerality tingling your tongue. Uh, very rich. It just leaves your tongue salivating for food. We'll have that in the store next week. One of the greatest Pinot Grigios I've ever tasted. Most excellent. All right, and then up little Sauvignon, which uh, they don't call it Sauvignon Blanc in Alto Adige. Uh, this is also from the Castle Ringberg Vineyard. And uh, some lovely fresh herbs, a little bit of a green kind of uh, minty note to this wine as well. But uh, a lovely concentration of this. Pink grapefruit, uh, melon, hay, fresh earth notes to this as well. Uh, very zesty finish. Uh, again, leaves the tongue salivating for food. Maybe a little slight salty note in this finish also. And then up some Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer, not a very popular grape. A lot of people cannot hang with the perfume and the spice in this. Gewürztraminer literally means spicy grape. But uh, these wines, very balanced. Definitely a lighter style. Not oily and textured at all with either one of these. The Alto Adige had that lovely classic rose petal nuance in the nose. Lychee nut fruit. Um, apples, fresh kind of fruit cocktail, fruit aromas in the nose, and uh, like I said, a lighter style of good work. Not hot at all in the finish, maybe just a hint of white pepper spice, um, but finishes fresh and um, short, but very pleasant. The Castellas, uh, the single vineyard Gewürztraminer they do, on the other hand, not a short finish on this wine. I mean, just echoing long finish with this. You get a lot of that perfume, that rose petal, the lychee nut fruit, a little bit more spicy. And uh, again, like I said, just incredible concentration. One of the best Gewürztraminers that I've had this year. Very distinctly Gewürztraminer, but also distinctly uh, European in style. Again, not over the top, but incredibly rich. All right, well, the Merlot, something I'd not had from Elena Walk, was a great surprise. This wine does not see any oak at all, but rather a really fresh and unadulterated style of Merlot. Lovely black plum and black cherry fruit to this. And uh, again, you get that touch of uh, herbaceousness that you get from Merlot and a little bit of earth here, but no oak at all. No spice from the oak, just pure unadulterated fruit and a lovely velvety texture and a fresh finish. Really delicious, and uh, for $18, wow. Oh, I'm sorry, we did have another supplier. That's right. We had uh, our friend from uh, <clears throat> Peary Winery stopped in. Well, Nathan, American Estate Wines, rather, with a few Peary wines, kind of to finish off the day. Well, one Peary wine, one uh, Mount Difficulty wine, two Pinot Noirs, one from Tasmania, one from Central Otago, New Zealand. And uh, the Peary wine tended to be a little close to me. I really like their wines. Uh, this wine was a little bit more austere in style with some nice blackberry fruit, a little bit some exotic spice showing in that, uh, but again, a bit muted and uh, not quite as bright and fresh as the Mount Difficulty more Roaring Meg. This is one of the wines that was named after, um, well, one of the women that was very popular in um, New Zealand. That's one of the ways they named their rivers, I guess, with the, one of the popular women of the evening. Her name was Meg, and uh, yes, so they named a river after her. Now they have a wine named after her, and uh, the wine is very nice, some black cherry raspberry fruit, a little bit of rhubarb in there also, a little bit more forward, a little bit more full on the palate, and about the same price as the Peary. All right, well, that's what I had to drink yesterday, folks. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.